Sooner Softball is presented by OU Health. Today, the Oklahoma Sooners' top-ranked defending national champions try to run their record to 33-0 on the season as they host in-state rival the Tulsa Golden Hurricane in the first meeting between these programs since 2019. Get to 7-8 and 9. The wind is a huge story tonight. Probably should have been our biggest storyline, in fact. And it's almost a challenge to tell exactly which direction it's coming from. Now, the flags to our right say definitely the northwest. You look out at center field, it says straight out of the north. I do know this, it's blowing in, and it's going to be an adventure. It is. Anything that is up in the air ought to get interesting, just like this one right here. This one tails all the way back to Riley Boone. So the outfielders, Boone, Coleman, and Alo will be on their toes in this one. And you can see that as soon as it left the bat up in the air, tailing left a bit. But good start for Nicole May. She has been solid, solid, solid this season. ERA of .95. That is 11th in the country. And I think one of the reasons that you pitch her tonight, number one, you like to see her get some work. Number two, she's got a great drop ball. She does, and she keeps the ball down. And in this weather, you're not worried about the ball getting up and leaving the yard as much as you are seeing a pop fly start and look routine and end up a foul ball <laughs> that drops. It's going to happen. This one is lined right into the glove of the diving tail and snow. Two down. That was hit hard by Haley Morgan. It was and Haley Morgan has put up some the best numbers for this Tulsa lineup this year. Great job going with it, but a great play by Taylor Snow laying out, saving the single. You retire a player who's hitting 332 with 32 hits, as you said, leading Tulsa in both of those categories. Here's Abby Jones slashing at the first pitch. And nothing in one. Abby Jones, a junior out of the Woodlands, Texas. Was the starter at shortstop last year and batted 214. This year, they've moved her to second base, and her batting average is up 130 points. A huge improvement for the sophomore and again and the things you see and the things we see players learn from their freshman year to their sophomore year and the growth and Gabby Jones is is proof of that for this Tulsa Hurricane in a hole though nothing in two against Nicole May The 0-2 fly ball into very shallow left. It's caught by Riley Boone, and it's a 1-2-3 ending in the circle for Nicole May. Freeze has been a motivator. You want to respond. And one of the things they did was watch the NCAA Women's and Men's Basketball Championship games and with the idea of what are the characteristics you see in these championship teams. We see the OU College of Professional and Continuing Studies batting order. And the word that came to most everybody's mind was smothering in watching South Carolina win the women's yes. NCAA championship. Smothering. And Coach Gasso said, yes, that's how we want to be from beginning to end. You know, and there's so many, I mean, basketball, softball, but it doesn't matter. There are so many parallels to a championship mindset and what that looks like. And sitting down, watching it as a team, you know, these are things Coach has done for years and years. But taking a team who has won a national championship and saying, watch someone else. What does it look like? Mm -hmm. Tiara Jennings leading things off. A 3-1 count. And Samantha Puka misses outside. So a leadoff walk to Tiara Jennings. Tiara having a great year. 13 home runs. She's had four two-home run games. And she's at first for Jocelyn Allo. And she has had a couple home runs come up big time in that Baylor game a couple of weeks ago with the walk-off. Yeah, she had a grand slam and a walk-off yes. in the Baylor series. Grace Lyons hit two walk-offs <laughs> last week. Tuesday, back-to-back -back games, walk-off home runs. Hollow check swing foul ball. Jocelyn comes in. Third in the country with a 513 batting average, 16 home runs, leads the nation. In her career, of the 203 home runs she has now hit, 25 have come in the first inning. That's, I mean, that's such an awesome stat. Talk about setting the tone, and a lot of times, 
you know, because this OU lineup is the way that it is, and there is power, there is consistency one through nine, you can take a hitter like Alo and stick her in the two hole, put her higher in the lineup. She sees more at bats. I mean, many times you look at a traditional lineup, your highest power numbers are coming in the middle of your lineup. So seeing her in the two hole and having to face Alo in the first inning for a pitcher, it's defeating. Mm -hmm. And Patty Gasso has batted her at times in the leadoff spot. Yes. Saw her do that with Lauren Chamberlain as well. Just, hey, if you can get one more at bat by putting her up there, then do it. Well, and it's so much about setting the tone and setting the tone offensively. I can't think of much, much more pressure to start a game than having to face one of the best hitters, arguably the best hitter in the in the entire country. No balls, two strikes. Samantha Pocock, senior from Henderson, Nevada. Her 17th start, 20th appearance. And Alo rips this off for the glove of the third baseman, Clara Skaggs. Tiara Jennings will stop at second base, and the Sooners have had the first two batters reach. Great at bat here by Jocelyn again. Down 0-2. That's not a place that you want to be as a pitcher. Catching a lot of white there on the plate, but good at bat by Allo, battling and finding her way on. Samantha Pocop has given up a walk and a base hit. We told you senior from Henderson, Nevada. 466 career strikeouts this year. Had a complete game three hitter against UTSA and a one hitter against Sam Houston State. She's a 50 year player. Grace Lyons showing bunt and taking a strike. And Pocop has good stuff. I mean, she's thrown 111 innings and struck out 116. I mean, she's she gets her strikeouts when she needs them. The issue has come with giving up base hits. She gives up, she's given up 102 hits to those 116 strikeouts. So having that balance between the two is not always what we want to see. One and one to Grace Lyons. What a roll Grace Lyons is on. Yeah. She had two five RBI games last week <laughs> and hit four home runs. We saw her have a three home run game. You and I broadcast yes. last week. She's seen the ball well. Yeah. We'll just put it at that. We'll leave it there. I guess. She goes after that one down low, swings and misses. And the pitch pops out of the glove of the catcher, Riley Keith. Both base runners will move up a base. And I love the aggressiveness, hit and run. You see Grace Lyons going for that, protecting her runners, even on the off speed down in the dirt. Grace Lyons doing her job. And now a chance of two runs batted in. She'll get the one two from Poca. High fly ball, wind is gonna impact this one. Definitely hold it in the park. Amani Edwards makes the catch and the Sooners won't be able to score a run. Tiara Jennings tagged up at third, but no chance to come home on that shallow fly ball. So that get up in the air and hang for a bit. Big out by Pocock. And it brings in Talon Snow. Batting 500 for the year, which is fifth in the country. Off-speed pitch there from Pocop. Fifth-year players, we told you, she was 11-2 last year with a 2.92 ERA and was second-team All-American Conference back in 2019. This one sliced foul out of play. Tulsa dropped all three of its American Conference games with Wichita State over the weekend. They gave up four home runs in each game. And so that's 12 home runs. But we saw Wichita State yes. here last week. That's not a surprise. No, Wichita State, I mean, they have a great offense, one through nine, and their power numbers. I mean, it, it, regardless of who they're playing, I mean, they hit some balls hard off of OU last week. Count but, stays 0-2 on Taylor Snow. But, I mean... Poke up again. She has good stuff. I don't think that she is seeing the success this year that she has seen in years past. I mean, that can that can go down to a lot of things, but she has a good off-speed pitch. She's going to have to utilize that tonight and get it in the zone. And Pulled saw it. to first base. Norwood will get the out there. 
Tara Jennings scores. It'll be an RBI ground out for Taylor Snow, and the Sooners take a 1 0 lead. And just as we're talking about the off speed pitch, Pocop pulls it out of her pocket, and it was a quality location, quality pitch, getting Snow out on her front foot. But again, just enough on the right side of the field to get the RBI. So Taylor Snow drives in that run. It is her 23rd RBI of the year. And the Sooners grab a 1-0 lead as Lindsey Elam is in doing the catching tonight. 328 average with 11 home runs and 29 driven in. Hit a home run on Saturday against UAB. Strike one to Lindsey Elam. I think we could have the conversation up and down the lineup of seeing the ball well. But I mean, Lindsey Elam went on a tear a few weeks ago. I think five at bats, five home runs. <laughs> the one pitches outside. The, the home run numbers, any way that you shuffle them, are just unbelievable. I mean, 13 times a player's hit two or more home runs. They've had two six home run games as a team this year. Well, and just the the power up and down the lineup. I mean, usually you're seeing that power middle of the lineup, maybe lead off here and there, but your nine hole isn't usually something you're going, we've got power here, watch out. <laughs> Seven, eight, nine might leave the yard. That's not usually in a scouting report. Four players with double-digit home runs to the Sooners. A ball of two strikes to Lindsey Elam. I think after giving up the walk and the base hit, Pocop would take only surrendering one run in this inning. Yes, the way this started, and being able to potentially get out of this and being in a situation to walk away only giving up one run, get a little bit of that momentum back in that Tulsa dugout. Two two belted deep down the left field line, but she turned on it quickly and hit it foul out of play. With the limit the plate, how quickly, you know, we're just talking about Tulsa and Pocop potentially getting out of this with minimal damage. Those tables could also turn real quick, and we could see one swing of the bat and get a crooked number up there for the Sooners. You see with that swing, even though the wind is blowing in, you can hit it out. And this lineup certainly can. This is a high fly ball to right, and Kennedy Kramer makes the catch, inning over. Use the ground. The wind is going to play a factor here. It's going to be tough to use the long ball. You need to use the ground and put pressure on this Tulsa defense to make plays. One away, base is clear. Riley Keith is the batter. She's a junior from Ardmore. This is her second year at Tulsa. She began her collegiate career at Seminole State College. Actually started at Louisiana and then to Seminole State. Former OU All-American Amber Flores, the head coach at Seminole State. She's been there a long time. Does a great job of developing players to move on. Not that many softball junior college programs no. out there, are there? There are, there are quite a few, but it's... The, seeing the progression of junior college player to moving on to D1, I think we see that lesser yeah. on the softball side. Ball and two strikes to Riley Keith. Pretty well hit into the gap in right center field. That's going to split Alo and Coleman. Riley Keith into second base with a one out double. Good piece of hitting by Riley Keith. And just seeing this pitch up in the zone, not quite, Nicole May knew it as soon as she threw it, not quite getting that movement that she wanted. But with that said, the route by Coleman and Allo out in the outfield, I think, again, not taking a deep enough route, trying to play the wind a little bit. This pitch is bunted by Imani Edwards. And a good play to get her at first by Janet Johns coming in. Down to third base goes Riley Keith. And the tying run is 
right down the line. It's also with a chance to get this thing all knotted. I think Tulsa, too, this is the team that has relatively high strikeout numbers. You don't usually see the one-out bunt, but trying to, to apply some pressure, trying to get OU to maybe make a mistake. But a comebacker to May ends the inning. A double, but a runner left for Tulsa. Sooners lead it 1-0. I mean, from the time that she stepped on campus here as a freshman, she has been consistent. She takes good at bats. She takes a lot of pitches. And she's just a mature hitter as a sophomore. Homered in each of the two games with UAB over the weekend. She had three hits last week, but she kept getting on base. Walks, hit by pitch. She does the things that, that sometimes are tough to teach. She also does that. <laughs> Hits the ball hard and threw it. Nearly got all the way to the wall on the ground. And Jada Coleman has a leadoff single for the Sooners in the second. And you got to love going up for this pitch a little bit and staying on top, using the ground. Great piece of hitting by Jada Coleman. Second Sooner hit. And Kenzie Hansen will be the batter. Sooners have had the leadoff hitter reach in each of the first two innings. Kenzie Hansen, the sophomore from Norco, California. There's a stolen base for Jada Coleman. The ball squirts through into center field, but Haley Morgan backing up the play. And the stolen base for Jada Coleman. That's her ninth in 10 tries this year. And I love the aggressiveness. Again, we've seen two leadoff base runners, Jada Coleman coming out with the steal. But again, applying pressure to this Tulsa defense. A one pitch to Kenzie Hansen off the end of the bat. It's going to be a tough play, though, for Wood. The throw to first is not in time. And Coleman makes third base on the play. Perfectly placed. Again, using the dirt. But good base running by Jada Coleman. She was off on contact, reading that the shortstop was coming in for this play. Sometimes we see base runners hesitate on kind of those those ground balls that are hit into no man's land and you just see Jada Coleman know it, recognize it, and be gone. Great base running. You know, Celeste Wood, I don't know if she was distracted by mm -hmm. the runner, Jada Coleman going across, but she kind of got a late look at that ball. Adjusted well, though, to get the out. Well, and here's the thing, too, as a shortstop for Celeste Wood. This one is bunted, cut off by the third baseman, Skaggs, and the Sooners get a sacrifice squeeze Jana Johns is able to drive in Jada Coleman, and Oklahoma leads 2 nothing. We've already said it. We have seen two singles, a stolen base, and a perfectly executed squeeze bunt, manufacturing runs, using the ground. That's what makes this team so great offensively. Mm -hmm. They don't have to rely on the long ball. So 2 nothing Sooners as Coleman scores. It is Hansen at second base with one away for Riley Boone. But circling back just for a second to, to the ground ball to Celeste Wood at short, we saw her hesitation. I bet if she could do it all over again and the adjustment is going to be go for that ball, if she makes contact with Jada Coleman, Jada Coleman's out. 0-1 mm -hmm. pitch to Boone, slashed toward left. It is a foul ball, just barely. Amani Edwards tracking it out there for the Golden Hurricane. So we'll do it all over again on 0-2 to Riley Boone, who was 5 out of 8 in three games last week. And it moved her average up 33 points. Patty Gasso said she's, she's been a, a really good team player. And when you're not getting an opportunity every single day, don't put too much pressure on yourself. And she has adjusted to that well. The 0-2. Back up the middle. That's a base hit into center field. Hansen will stop at third base. 
as the throw comes in, cut off by the first baseman Norwood. And so Riley Boone is six out of her last nine at the plate. And the Sooners roll the lineup over. Just as you said, Riley Boone, she makes the most of her opportunities, just like this base hit right back up the middle. Again, I love to see these OU hitters hitting ground balls, keeping the ball out of the air. But Riley Boone takes opportunities, and she she continues to impress. Having a laugh about that one <laughs> at first base. And it's back to the top of the order for Tiara Jennings, who walked and scored back in the first. So who's manufacturing some runs? Yes. Ground out, the drives in a run, a squeeze, bunt. And you have to like the approach if you're Patty and JT Gasso of not so many fly balls tonight. Mm -hmm. Well, and again, it's it's game plan. It is executing a game plan. And again, we're going to see runners in motion. We're going to see hit and runs and trying to get these Tulsa, this Tulsa defense to make a mistake. Riley Boone takes off and swipes second base, so the Sooners have two runners in scoring position. Tiari Jennings having another great year. Batting 398 coming in. 13 home runs. 40 runs driven in. Out of your leadoff hitter. I was you took the words right out of my mouth. <laughs> That's getting that type of RBI. Um, getting that type of RBI work out of your leadoff hitter, but we've seen a pinch hit here. Yeah, we have. Alyssa Brito comes through with a base hit past the diving Clara Skaggs. So Brito comes off the bench, replacing Tiara Jennings, and drives home the third run as Kenzie Hansen scores. And again, taking advantage of opportunities. Alyssa Brito has been great this season. Off-speed pitch. Just getting enough of it and finding a way to sneak through that 5-6 hole. So Alyssa Brito, we saw her start last week in the midweek game. Gets a start here tonight. Comes through with the RBI single. And the Sooners in position for a big inning with two runs already across on three hits. That one caught me by surprise. Pinch hitting in the second inning. But I know that the Patty Gasso and you and I talked about it. We had her on Sooner Sports Talk radio show last week about getting opportunities mm -hmm. when you are winning by run rule there aren't as many at bats for players so you may have to get players at bats earlier in games as you move through things yeah and that's not something that that you're used to doing as a coach i mean you get at bats as the game goes on especially with your leadoff hitter right you your leadoff hitter sets the tone and and kind of keeps things rolling but what i love is the fact that Elisa Brito comes off the bench in a pinch hit situation and clutches up with runners in scoring position. First and third, Jocelyn Allo, the home run queen, bunts home a run. Love it. Riley Boone scores, and it's 4 nothing Sooners. How about that? And I feel like we're watching, and this is a Sooner team that is working on things. All right, when you when we're in a tight game and we've got to get a run across, you've got to be able to execute the bunt. We've seen it twice in this inning. Alo is such a complete hitter. It doesn't matter what you ask her to do. Complete hitter, complete ball player, team first over anything else. For Jocelyn Alo, that's RBI number 42. It's, I know, the first sacrifice of her season. I wonder if it's the first of her career. Can you remember one? We need Chris Plank here. Yes, I, I'll tell you. I can't. Can I think of one off the top of my head? Sure. No, but I'm gonna go out on a limb and say it is not her first sacrifice. We have to go back through and see. But she drives in the fourth run, third of the inning. Grace Lyons hit a fly ball to left her first time. Also, too, I mean, OU has not been in a lot of situations. Talking about getting getting players in to get reps and see pitches and get at bats. OU has also not been in that many situations this season with all the run rules mm -hmm. to 
to work on executing squeeze plays, to yeah. work on doing the things that are going to win them a national championship. The home runs are great, but I'm going to say it, and people may not agree. Home runs are not what are not what is going to win this team a championship. It's going to be the small details. And Patty Gasso was talking about that very thing today. She said, you have to know things you need to work on mm -hmm. within the body of these games, even when you're winning by run rule. You've got to do things like this. They strike two to Grace Lyons at a full count. Melissa Brito at second base. Two gone. Three sooner runs on three hits and two sacrifice bunts in the inning. The payoff, torched foul out of play. And one thing too, if you're Pocop and Tulsa, we've seen hit and run attempts, we've seen two squeeze plays, we've seen some stolen bases. Pocop, she is always in the zone, she does not walk many people. However, when you are seeing that type of aggressiveness and short game from OU, start expanding the zone. Pocop able to Retire Grace Lyons and the inning is over, but the Sooners have made some changes defensively and shuffling the lineup a little bit as Nicole May goes back to work in the third inning. Michaela Jackson, Kennedy Kramer, and then the top of the order, Kylie Norwood, the scheduled hitters. I don't have any any reason to think if there's any anything wrong with T.R.A. Jennings, but kind of seeing the shifts with Hanson slipping behind home plate, Elam kicking over to first base, and Taylor Snow at second, something we don't see very often. So we'll reset the Sooner defense for you here in just a moment. Three balls and no strikes to Michaela Jackson, the designated player. And that's a four-pitch walk to start the third. Not something we see from May very often. She's only walked 10 hitters this season, especially in the eight hole, a leadoff walk. One thing Nicole May does well is she works ahead on hitters, throws strikes. So the Sooner outfield is Alyssa Brito, Jada Coleman, and Riley Boone from left to right. And as DJ was mentioning, Lindsey Elam is at first. Taylor Snow has gone from first to second, and Kinsey Hansen is now catching for the Sooners. Kennedy Kramer, the right fielder, is in for the Golden Hurricane. Batting 196. The ball in a strike to count now. The Sooners as a staff, a .67 earned run average. They've given up 17 earned runs all season in 32 plus games. And it's just, you know, it's so easy to get caught up. I mean, how can you not get caught up in the offensive numbers and what this team is doing? I mean, they're leading the country in basically every single offensive category. But to have a pitching staff with a sub one ERA, it's not just that they're run ruling people. Part of the reason they're run ruling people is because they're throwing shutouts mm -hmm. almost every game. One, two, ground ball to Snow. She'll get one with Lions, the throw to first bounces off the protective net around the first base dugout. So the Supers get the force play and retire Michaela Jackson going down the line. Kennedy Kramer will be safe at first. She'll actually go to second on the throw. Great pitch by May. Catching Kramer on the inside part of the plate, just sawing her off. Not something we see very often from Grace Lyons. And that, I think that was a rolled two pretty easily. So the Sooners commit the error that allows Kramer to go to second base, and the batter will be Norwood. 
Kylie Norwood fly down to the left fielder. Back in the first inning. At the time, it was Riley Boone out there in left. There's a shot back up the middle into center field by Norwood. Up with it is Jada Coleman. The throw will be cut off, and Kramer will stop at third base anyway. So now Tulsa with runners at the corners and only one out. Tulsa trying to string something together here. Answer back the three-run second by the Sooners. And again, another pitch that's a little bit elevated by May, catching a little bit too much plate. And this is where that double play, having that double play rolled, comes back in. And the error allows a runner to go to second, and now that runner is at third. And Haley Morgan, the batter. Pops this one up. Foul territory, and it's got no chance to stay in play with this win. Although I do think the wind has died down a little bit since this game started. That's good for everybody sitting in the stands. It's more of a gentle Oklahoma breeze. <laughs> Is there such a thing? No, not so much. 0-1 here to Haley Morgan. A beautiful pitch on the outer half that time from Nicole May. May's off speed has been great so far in this game. She's pulled it out of her pocket when she's needed it. Great spot there, just freezing Haley Morgan on the outside corner. 0 2, got her swinging. And you gotta love the back to back change ups. Tulsa has shown that they can sit on one speed, but here's what I like. It's a changeup, back to back, and the second one is deliberately almost in the dirt, getting the chase by Haley Morgan. Great location. Can I tell you something else about you don't necessarily want to be in these situations, first and third, mm -hmm. one out to it, but you like to see how your team performs when you're in these situations because there haven't been all that many of them. There haven't, and it's glad to see him get out of it with a great pitch by Nicole May. Great pitch, Elam. Steps on the bag, Tulsa leaves two stranded, and the Sooners carry a 4-0 lead to the bottom of the third. As the Sooners get into the thick of Big 12 Conference play after taking last weekend off and hosting UAB for a pair of games here in Norman. And having that bye weekend early can, in conference play, can be a blessing or a curse. You know, it, everyone's so excited to get to that second, second section of the season in Big 12. But sometimes it's nice to have the bye later. Taylor Snow is going to beat the wrap to first base and have a leadoff single. So she drove in a run with a ground ball in the first, and she reaches safely to start the third. Sooners have done a great job with their leadoff hitters this inning of getting on base. Tulsa has not had an opportunity defensively to breathe. They have had a runner on base from the get-go. That's that word, suffocating, yes. that they came up with after watching the women's NCAA championship game at South Carolina's performance. Lindsey Elam now hit a fly ball to the right fielder, Kennedy Kramer, her first time. Fouls this one back. Lindsey now down at first base. Wind picks up a little bit once again. I mean, if you try to pick up a handful of dirt or kick at the dirt, the first five rows are going to get blasted with dirt right. as it's blowing in. I think we thought it was dying down. I think they were just giving us a break. I think Mother Nature got angry that I said yeah. that. <laughs> Sorry. You can hear it. Yeah, you can. You can see that. The camera beginning to shake a little bit. There's a drive that one hops off the wall from Elam. Tail and Snow will stop at third, and here comes the Sooner offense again. Snow a single, Elam a double. Runners at second and third, and nobody out. Great piece of hitting. Taking this pitch. Drop ball on the outside corner. Not an awful pitch, and Elam just goes down and gets it and laces it down the line. So 
So Lindsey Elam pulls up there at second base. That is double number four for her this year. And Jada Coleman is in. She singled and scored after stealing a base in the second inning. Pulls it back. Pushes a great bunt that's picked up by the shortstop, Wood. That's going to be a bunt base hit and an RBI for Jada Coleman. You could not have rolled it out there any better than that. Execution. That is the word of the night for the Sooners. Execution. And again, the bunt for a hit, just pushing it right in no man's land. No shot for Tulsa to make a play anywhere. Great, great, great. I'm going to use the word again, execution. So Jada Coleman is two for two tonight and five out of her last six at the plate. She's driven in a run and scored a run tonight. And here's Kinsey Hansen. She had a base hit and scored in the second. It is a relentless offense right now. Eight hits, three hits here in this inning. And Hansen blisters this one foul. You know, with, with Pocop, we've seen her miss some pitches. But, I mean, with Elam, with the double down the line, not a terrible pitch. It was low and away. Could it have been off the plate a little bit more? Absolutely. But not a terrible pitch. It's not like she's just throwing and missing spots right down the middle. So it's good to see these OU hitters you can see the plan. You can see them attacking some pretty decent pitches. It's with this lineup, pitches that you might get away with yes. against other teams you don't with anybody in this lineup. And I think that's been, I mean, that's been the issue. I mean, if you're writing a scouting report and up and down the lineup, most of the lineup's hitting over 400 and you have a couple most of the lineup, too, again, double-digit home runs. How do you throw to that? I think that has been the question all year. Do you mix speeds? Where in, and we have seen some pitchers here as of late with Baylor and UAB have some success. But those successes, I think, also not taking anything away from those performances from those pitchers, some of that success has also come from this OU lineup at times getting a little too anxious going outside the zone swinging at pitches that are not necessarily strikes one two pitch grounded to the shortstop wood only play is first and it pops out of the glove of norwood everybody will be safe and lindsey elam scores the sixth sooner run so you will give hansen an rbi for hitting the ground ball she's safe at first on the error and we see christy strimple the tulsa head coach out of the dugout and we've seen this a lot today. And, you know, we always like to see runs being scored on base hits, doubles in the gap. But sometimes, especially in these conditions, you have to play the game. And we're seeing OU, Kinsey Hansen, taking a pitch she can handle, getting the ground ball deep on the left side of the field, able to... Sooner runners... A core at first and Jada Coleman at third and here is Jenna Johns. She laid down a sacrifice bunt that drove in a run her first time. Sean Bunn here takes the pitch and core slides in safely at second base with a stolen base. And that's her third stolen base in four tries this year. And I think part of that mound visit as well. First and third play. OU, we typically see some aggression on the bite, on the base paths, trying to get defenses to make a mistake and find a way to sneak a run across. Part of that visit was go for the out. We've got runners in scoring position. We've given up two already. Try to throw her out if she takes off. And I don't think she did. I mean, you want to slow it down. Here's the thing that gets interesting. And it could be on the tag as well, saying that she she got her before she got that hand in there. Yeah. She, her feet slide past the bag on the outside. But if they don't have an angle that is more definitive than that, then I don't think you can overturn it. It's a good slide by Hannah Core going away on the backside of the bag, away from the tag. Um, 
I, I, if I had to take a guess, what they're looking at and what they're seeing is that hand came in late, and I don't think her feet or her legs ever got to the back. Mm -hmm. Just tough to tell from what we saw there, and the ruling is safe. It's, it's tough to overturn. I don't think that they're in in real time. You slow it down, it looks different, but in real time, it, it looked it looked pretty pretty blatant that Core was safe. Now Jana, Jana John said that RBI sacrifice bunt skies one to straightaway left field. Wynn's going to play havoc with this and blow it all the way foul. <laughs> this started in straightaway left field and ended up foul. And she squared that up too. I mean, you could see the left fielder for Tulsa, Imani Edwards, looked like she was trying to camp under <laughs> it and then it bounced off the concrete. Kennedy Kramer now out in left. Bouncing ball, short hopped by Wood. The throw to first is in time, but Jada Coleman will score. And the Sooners take a 7 0 lead. An RBI ground out by Jana Johns, who has now driven in two runs tonight. If they're not going to kill you with the long ball, they're going to get it done. Again, playing the game we're seeing. High hoppers, infield plays that the only play is to go to first base. Sarah Yamas Howell is the new pitcher. 19 appearances last year, third year player for the Golden Hurricane, and she replaces Samantha Pocock. Riley Boone back up there, had a base hit. Stole a base and scored a run for the Sooners back in the third. And what Tulsa needs here is outs. We don't see a ton of strikeout numbers from Howell. Off the end of the bat, it goes to Skaggs, and safe at the plate will be Core. Great, great, great slide. Two great slides yes. on that trip around the bases for Core. And going for the play at the plate, I think is the right call here. But we see the throw on the other side of the plate. We get that throw to where all she has to do is lay down a tag. We see a different outcome, but what a slide. Coming in and just catching the back corner with her hand. Again, details, doing the little things. So it's a fielder's choice play, and Riley Boone drives in her first run of the night. The Sooners have an 8-0 lead in the third. Back to the top of the lineup, and Brito. Brito had a base hit in the Sooners' second inning. That drove home a run. Here takes down and away. Brito's RBI single made it 3-0. An RBI on a bunt, two ground outs, and a fielder's choice here in this inning. Manufacturing the runs are the Sooners. Yes, we are, we are in run roll territory right now with eight runs on the board, and there has not been a single home run hit. Nope. And I love it. I, <laughs> just throwing that out there, I love it. You love to see the home runs. It is awesome, and it is, but it is so important for this team to not live and die by that and be able to do what they're doing just here and use the short game, take bases, use the ground, and put pressure on defenses. This is ripped out into right field. That will fall in for a base hit off the bat of Brito, who now has two hits. She's going to try to go to second base and cut down there as backing up the play was the pitcher, Yamas Howell, able to get Brito sliding in head first to second base. And I think they may review yep. this. I'm not going to lie. I thought she was safe from here. Now, do I have the best view in the house? Maybe. But for <laughs> a play at second base, probably not. But I thought she got her hand in there. A 
And look again. It was Skaggs with the throw down to second. Called out immediately by the second base mm -hmm. umpire, Jerry Jones. And I'd be curious to see the view that they've got in the booth because the view we've got here is not, it, it doesn't really show us much. Yeah, that's, I think she had her hand in there because you see the tag down by her belt. In this game. And the call of out is affirmed. So Brito is cut down at second base after her base hit. And that's out number two. And again, if it has to be something that you you see fully, it's, I don't know, I think it's tough to overturn. Um, now it's amazing the camera views that, that we get. And, Again, I, I wouldn't want to be the one making those calls. I can tell you that much. <laughs> no, I agree. It is, uh, it's a no-win situation. Here's Jocelyn Allo. Bunted and drove in a run her last time up. She had a single in the first inning, so one for one with an RBI. And now batting 519. In the air toward right center field. Jarvis able to make the catch, and the inning is over. But Saturday, beautiful. Wouldn't miss it. <laughs> First pitch swinging. This is driven right at the center fielder, Jada Coleman. As Celeste Woods squared that ball up, but Coleman caught the old Adam ball. I feel like this game, again, it's 8 nothing. It feels like it has been so dominated by OU offensively. We have seen Tulsa square up a couple pitches. Have they fallen? No. But this is a Tulsa team that has struggled at times offensively. And they've made some solid contact. That is Riley Boone in center field. Our apologies. Shuffling things around out there. And Mackenzie Donahue is now playing in right field. And with one out, Riley Keith the batter. Keith had a double her last time up. Six of the eight sooner runs tonight, DJ, have been scored on either a ground out or a sacrifice spot. Six of eight runs. And, we, you know, we said it at the beginning of the game with the way that this wind is howling. The, they're going to have to use the ground. And they they have done that. And also, too, I mean, it's not like Tulsa has been kicking the ball around either. I mean, it's just, it is using and playing the game. Um, you aren't always going to score runs, hitting doubles off the wall. And we see that a lot from this team. But you have to be able to, to move runners. You have to be able to hit a ground ball to the right side of the field and score a runner from third base. It's just, again, doing the small things that are going to be so important in postseason for this team. One out walk issued to Riley Keith. That's the second walk that Nicole May has issued tonight. Nicole May in her ninth start of the year, 15th appearance. And try to pick up win number 10. Jordy Ball has 14 wins. Hope Troutwine has nine. Hope Troutwine is 9-0 with a .13 earned run average. She's given up one earned run this year. One earned run in 54 and two-thirds innings. It's crazy. Well, it's how often do you see a pitching staff? I mean, that for the most part, each we're getting ready potentially to see Nicole May with double-digit wins. Hope Trout Ryan is right there about at some point will have double-digit wins. Jordy Ball, the freshman, with 14. You have an entire staff who, and it's also keeping your, your arms fresh. You're not relying on one arm. One and two to Amani Edwards. 
had a sacrifice back in the second inning. But I really think part of this team's success too is there's so many teams that that play differently. A great pitch. Way to come back for the strikeout after the leadoff walk. But there's so many teams that play differently when a certain pitcher is on the mound. And this team doesn't do that. And I think that that, that attributes to some of the success of this pitching staff. But this is just a solid pitching staff. One, two, three, however you want to toss them. I don't think it's ace. And it's, it's an entire staff and what they're doing across the board. That was the second strikeout for Nicole May. And with two outs, it brings in Clara Skaggs. Skaggs hit one right back to Nicole May for an out her first time. And with all of the great Sooner teams they've had over the years, it hasn't just been one on. There's always been a second, even sometimes a third pitcher on the staff. There has, and, you know, we saw it with Kalani Ricketts and Michelle Gascoigne mm -hmm. um, in the national championship game. Michelle Gascoigne threw that game. Yeah. And um, it's, again, the teams that go deep into postseason have more than one arm. You can't rely on one. You can, but I think that you see pitchers better when they haven't thrown every single inning. 0-2 oh, the count on Skaggs. been low and away. It's also with two hits, a single by Norwood in the third, and a double by Riley Keith, who just walked. Two balls and two strikes. Sooner Baseball got a win last night over another Tulsa area team, Oral Roberts, over at Eldale Mitchell Park. And they have Bedlam this weekend up in Stillwater. All right. 2-2 two -two is rolled to first. Elam will take it herself, and the inning's over. A one-out walk and a runner left, and the Sooners have an 8-0 lead headed to the bottom of the fourth inning. Dura Yamas Howell is back to the circle. And facing Grace Lyons to lead things off. Backhanded by the shortstop Wood. Long throw and a great stretch by Norwood, but couldn't quite keep her foot on the bag. And Grace Lyons is safe. It's a good play by Celeste Wood. And again, finding that 5-6 hole. This is a single pretty much all day long unless Grace Lyons is playing short. But great play by Celeste Wood playing the hop on the backhand, made it a closer play. It is base hit number 10 for the Sooners. Eight different Sooners have at least one hit. See Patty Gasso going to the lineup card. We may see a, a pinch hitter coming on for the Sooners. Sophia Nugent is going to pinch hit for Taylor Snow. It's good to see, again, the opportunities. When you have all the run rules, you have shortened games. Your opportunities to get some of these young players at bats, are, they're so few. Sophia Nugent, freshman from Seal Beach, California, was the number three recruit in the class of 2021, has a home run this year. What a recruiting class that the Sooners put together. And it's year in and year out. It is. I mean, it doesn't matter if it's in the circle. Obviously, offensively, and Jordy Ball was the Gatorade player of the year. I mean, just, it's, there is never a rebuilding year here in Norman. And it's, so much of that is to recruiting. And recruiting at times has gotten relatively early. You are you're looking at players and scouting players when they're young and it's it takes it takes an eye to be able to see 
not just talent, but also see potential. It's easy to see talent, mm -hmm. right? But seeing the potential and knowing what is going to work in your program and what is going to to help continue to build your culture, I mean, that is a whole different level of recruiting. Nugent takes this one inside. Sooners got three of the consensus top five players in the country last year. Nugent, Jordy Ball, whom you mentioned. Taria Coleman was a top five player out of Houston as well. And you think about the class before that, as you alluded to, they're just stacking them up. I mean, yes. You had Tiari Jennings and Jada Coleman in the class prior to that. Three balls and two strikes now to Nugent. And also two. It this is not taking anything away from being a top recruit. It's, it, that's, that's an accomplishment in itself. However, being highly recruited and being a great player coming out of high school and travel ball does not always translate. And so, so much of that, again, goes back to this coaching staff and, again, the program and the upperclassmen passing the torch to these younger players and showing them what it means to be a part of this program. And, you know, sometimes talent isn't, isn't enough. It's not just what you need. It's all the other things that go into it. The 3-2 is foul back. Now, this Tulsa team has had some interesting games this year. They have come back from down at least 7-0 to win twice this year. They were down 8-0 against UAB and won 17-12. Down 7 nothing to Louisiana Tech and won 8-7. And they had a tie earlier this year against Houston. It was a game where they had agreed there was a drop-dead time when they had to finish, and the game went nine innings. And finally, Houston had to leave town to get home, so they ended up with a tie, their first tie since 2013. Now, those don't happen very they often. They do not. Usually on getaway day, much like you said with the Houston having to probably go catch a flight. But... Don't see him very often. Count stays at three and two to Sophia Nugent. And there's ball four. That's a good at bat fouling off a couple of pitches. Love seeing the at bat again. One of the toughest things to do in softball is to come in as a pinch hitter and have a quality at bat. And that's exactly what Nugent did. Saw a lot of pitches, worked the count. Great at bat by the freshman. Grace Green is going to pinch hit now for Lindsey Elam. So Elam had gone one for two with a double and a run scored. And now Grace Green pinch hits. Senior from Oakdale, California. She was the Big 12 Freshman of the Year in 2019. Had 17 home runs. You talk about playing a role and being a team player. There's so many. I mean, and, and Grace Green is such a tremendous ball player and has done so much in her career here, starting nearly every game as a freshman and then at times as an upperclassman as a senior, being a role player. There's a lot of people who would not handle that well, and Grace Green has taken that. She is, is continuing to, to be a leader for this team and, again, playing a role. Two national championship teams for Grace Green. Ground ball to the second baseman, Jones, and they're able to get the first play on Sophia Nugent. Grace Lyons goes to third. So Grace Green is safe on the fielder's choice play. First for the first out of the inning. And Mackenzie Donahue, who went out to right field in that last half inning defensively, will now get her first plate appearance. As she bats here in the spot Jada Coleman had previously occupied. Coleman two for two with two runs scored and a run batted in. And now Donahue gets a shot. Mackenzie Donahue, the junior from Mustang. She was on the Women's College World Series All-Tournament team, had two big home runs against UCLA. 
talk about continuing to grind and continuing to work. Mackenzie Donahue, kind of the picture of that last season. This ball caught by Jarvis in right field, but the Sooners will get a run as Lions tags and scores. And it's 9 0. Mackenzie Donahue drives in the ninth run of the night, her first RBI of the evening. Again, seeing runs being scored using ground, sacrifice fly here. Again, not an awful pitch. Drop ball outside, not getting enough outside. But finding a way, McKenzie Donahue, to get the run in. So now that's seven of nine runs that have scored on either a ground out or a sacrifice. I would be curious to know how many run rolls, if any, have happened this season without a home run being hit. Ooh. Now you're now you're stretching my uh, <laughs> knowledge. That's going to take some research. Being told maybe Minnesota earlier this year. But we would have to check. Bouncing ball to the second baseman Jones. Over to Norwood, and the inning is over. Coca-Cola, official partner of University of Oklahoma Athletics. It was going to take a lot to get a ball to leave the yard with this wind tonight blowing straight in. I've got to say that Nicole May has been solid. I mean, again, we're we're looking at a point here of potentially the last three outs of the game. She has been good. Do I think she walks away maybe feeling like she needs to make a couple of adjustments here and there? Yes. But again, just like we've seen her all season, consistent, throwing good pitches. Something that's been really good for Nicole May tonight has been her off speed. She's thrown it at different levels. We've seen some strikeouts with the changeup. Some frozen strike calls. The off-speed has really been good for Nicole May tonight. The one-two to Gracie Jarvis, and she got her swinging. Third strikeout for Nicole May tonight. I love the pitch, the screwball inside. Great location. That will bring in Kennedy Kramer. Kramer was safe on a fielder's choice play the first time. Nicole May trying to pick up her 10th win of the year. Jordan Jordy Balls, Sooner pitchers with double digit wins. And Hope Troutwine's got nine herself. 0 oh 2 on Kramer. The top of the order, Kylie Norwood waiting on deck. Well, that's so huge, too, especially getting into Big 12 play. Three games set, you've got three pitchers that you can throw out there Friday, Saturday, Sunday. You're not running, and we may see Jordy Ball or Nicole May or Hope Troutwine, for that matter, throw two games in a set, but I think we're going to see a lot of a Friday, Saturday, Sunday staff. This would be her sixth complete game of the year if she can finish it up. Two balls, two strikes to Kramer. Back-to-back -back strikeouts, a foul tip that's hung on to by Kenzie Hansen, and the Sooners are one out away from a win. It's good to see Nicole May make an adjustment on the rise ball. I feel like it has sat a little flat a couple times this evening. Great late break, and we're seeing again the strikeout with the rise ball. When I think earlier in the game, we've seen foul balls or base hits with that pitch. Good adjustment. Feels like she's picking up momentum yes. as this game has gone along. In fact, she has struck out three of the last four batters she's faced. And here's Norwood, who has one of the two Tulsa hits, had a single in the third inning. We're getting later in the game, but I feel like Nicole May, this is the best she has come out in this game. And she's been solid. I mean, she's she's throwing a shutout with numerous strikeouts and only giving up two hits. But I feel like she's turned it on a little bit here in the fifth. 
Yes, she's got a two-hit shutout with four strikeouts and two walks. The 2-0 pitch to Norwood. Hit well into the gap in left center field. That will bounce and roll all the way out to the wall. And it's a two-out double by Norwood. Her second hit. She's having quite a year. That average is going to be up over 300 now with that double. And for Norwood, that's double number nine, second most on this Tulsa team. And good effort by Riley Boone. And again, we're seeing Nicole May make some adjustments with those pitches up in the zone. Again, not just getting that sharp break that we saw in the pitch before to Kennedy Kramer. Mackenzie Donahue and Alyssa Brito have swapped positions in the outfield, the corner outfield spots. Donahue playing left and Brito playing right with Riley Boone in center. 1-0 pitch for Morgan. Morgan's 0 for 2. She's lined to first and struck out tonight. and a strike. This is a Tulsa team, again, throughout the season. Has struggled at times offensively. At other times, they've put up some pretty, some pretty big numbers as far as run production goes. But they've put together some pretty good at-bats. That is a foul ball just barely down the left field line for strike two. And as I say that, Haley Morgan lacing that pitch down the line. But again, we've seen some pretty good at bats by Tulsa this evening. Aggressive at bats, swinging at some pretty good pitches. Wouldn't be surprised to see an off speed here by Nicole May. It's been a great pitch for her, trying to catch Haley Morgan out on her front foot. Ball three, a little upstairs to Haley Morgan, and a payoff pitch coming with first base open. And Tulsa's leading hitter, Abby Jones, waiting on deck. Important, important pitch here with Abby Jones sitting on deck. Drops third strike. It'll be picked up by Hanson, and the Sooners win. Nicole May strikes out three in the inning, five in the game. She pitches a two-hit shutout and comes up with her 10th win of the year. We'll come back and rack things up on the Bud Light Post Game Show when we return. Sooner Softball is presented by OU Health.